Good morning everyone, how's it going today? Welcome back to the channel, it's so great to see you here again. Uh, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to chat with a MySQL database using Python and Langchain. Okay, we're going to be going through all of what is going on behind the scenes. We're going to be creating our own Langchain chain and I'm going to be explaining all the details of what is going on here with a very nice diagram. Also, all the code for this tutorial is going to be available in this article right here that is in my, in my website. You will find it um, for free in the description below, okay? So make sure to open that link to follow along. Here you also have the, explana the written explanations if you prefer to read rather than watch. And yeah, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first of all, I want to show you what is actually going to be happening behind the scenes in this notebook. The thing is that we're going to be creating a full chain that is going to take as input the user question about the database. So let's say a user asks something like, how many users are there in this database? And the result of the entire chain is going to be the answer in natural language. Something like, there are 48 users in this database. Okay. Now, under the hood, inside of this chain, we're going to be having another chain and a tool that we're going to be using. So, the other chain is this one, is the SQL chain, and this one is going to take the user question and the database schema, and it's going to put them in a prompt. Okay, if you don't know what a database schema is, it is basically just the list of all of the table names and all of the columns of each table in your MySQL database. Okay, so... This, this chain is going to take a prompt that is going to go something like, given the following database schema and the following user question, create a SQL query that is going to answer that question. And then we're going to get just a SQL query as a result. Then we're going to run the query using a tool by Langchain. And we're going to run the results of the query through another language model. And we're going to ask the final question, something like, um, given the following question and the following result from this SQL query, give an answer. And that is only when we're going to get the actual response that is going to be, there are 48 users in the database. Okay, so that's actually what's going to be happening behind the scenes. We're going to be coming back to this, to, to this diagram as we go. But just so that you have like a clear idea of what is going to be happening during this tutorial. Okay, so let's start this off. In the article that I have uh, right here, I show you how to do this with both uh, SQLite and MySQL. But I figured that for this video, it, the most important thing is to show you how to do it using MySQL, because even though SQLite is very useful as well, it's mainly only used for testing purposes, and that's also the database that they use to showcase this in the Langchain official documentation. So I figured that using MySQL uh, was something that's going to be useful for you because that's the actual database that people use in production. And as for the contents of the database that we're going to be using, we're going to be using the Chinook, sorry, Chinook database. I made a typo here. And this database is basically a sample database, which means it's not from a real um, application, but it's a sample database that contains a lot of data that looks real and it represents a digital media store. Okay, It includes tables for artists, albums, media tracks, invoices and customers. So we're going to be able to import this SQL um, database into our MySQL instance and we're going to be able to query it using our chain that we're going to be building. Okay. Um, if you, I mean, in order to follow the tutorial, you're going to have to go to latest release and download the appropriate release for MySQL. Or to make it easier for you, I also added this quick link right here that links directly to the version that we're going to be using. So if you don't want to go to their GitHub and go through the release list, you can just come right here to the article and link and, and click on this link right here. Uh, so let's go to the MySQL part right here and let's import this SQL file into our database. 
let's now download our database right here that I told you from this link right here. So now that downloaded the database. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a MySQL instance. Okay. So in order to do that, I already have MySQL installed. So I'm going to do MySQL. I'm going to co connect this root and There you go. Now I'm inside a MySQL in my computer. Let me just show you that I don't have um, databases. I don't have Sh the Chinook database. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create it real quick. So let's do that right here. We're going to do create database. We're going to use Chinook. We're going to name it Chinook. Let's just use it. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to load the database that we are using. So we're going to do source and I'm going to say that I want to source from this file that I just downloaded. And there you go. Now if I do select everything from let's say artist, I'm going to limit that to 10 artists. There you go. I have my artist ID and my name, which are the t the columns from this table that you see right here. So now I have my database installed in my local computer. And now I can actually start coding my chain to talk with this MySQL database. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using a local notebook uh, for Python. I am not going to be using Colab for this video because I am going to be communicating with my local instance of MySQL, which just makes it easier to do if I am running a local notebook. Um, in order to run my notebook in my VS Code, I had to initialize a virtual environment. I used Conda for that, so I just did Conda create, then I named it chat with MySQL, and I specified that the version of Python that I wanted to use is Python 3.10. Okay, I'm not going to run this because I already did that. And then I just activated my my environment using chat with MySQL. Okay, so that's what you're going to have to do if you want to run your notebook locally. I already have it active, as you can see right here. And now I can actually start. I can actually start coding my chain. All right. Now, the first thing that we're going to have to do is I'm going to import the API keys from the language model that I'm going to be using. As it's usual, I'm going to be just showcasing this with OpenAI because the API is very simple, but you feel free to use any language model that you want. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to do import OS and I'm going to do OS environ, oops, OS environ and I'm going to set the API key for OpenAI and my API key I have it stored here on the side so let me just paste it right here of course I'm going to disable this API key before you before I upload this video when I hit run in VS Code it's going to ask me to select the Python environment that I want to use to execute this so I'm going to show the conda environment that I that I just created. This is of only because I am using Jupyter Notebooks, right? Um, so here we have a problem apparently, OS environment, OpenAI key equals, yep, I use a single quote here. There you go. S what's the problem here? There you go. So now, now I initialized my API key. Now it's time to actually start creating the first prompt that we're going to be using for our SQL query. Let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to do this part right here. We're going to be creating a SQL chain that is going to take our user question and it's going to take a database schema and it's going to combine them together to give us the SQL query. Okay, so first of all, we need a prompt that will take our user question and the database schema. So let's create that prompt right now. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to be using Langchain. So we're going to do pip install Langchain. 
Now I already have it installed, so that was faster than it might be for you. But um, just for reference, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you which version of Langchain I'm using here. So let's see, freeze, um, no, peep freeze and grab Langchain. So just for reference, I'm using Langchain 0 0.1.7, okay? All right, so now that we have Langchain installed, what we're going to do is we're going to import from Langchain core and we're going to tap into the prompts module. We're going to import the we're going to import the class chat prompt template like that. And now we can create our template. Now the template is just a string. So let's just create our string like this. And the string, I, I mean, the template, I have it copied right here. Let me just copy it for you. So the template for our prompt is going to be based on the table schema below, write a SQL query that would answer the user's question. And then we pass in the schema, which is going to be the, the schema for this database right here. And then we're going to pass in the question from the user. Okay. And then we're going to create our prompt. So we're going to create our prompt for using the class that we created. And actually this is wrong. We're going to do from template. And then we're going to pass in the template that we just created right here. Just going to execute this. And as you can see, let me just show you how that works. I'm going to format this prompt. And let's say we, we have the schema. So I'm just going to pass, we're just going to say that the schema is going to be um, my schema my schema and then the question is going to be how are you I mean up uh, how many uses are there so there you go we have our prompt formatted right here so we have based on the table schema below right a SQL query that will answer the question and now we have my schema which was this variable that was um, replaced and then in the end we have the uh, question how many uses are there so that's that's convenient uh, let's just add a double a uh, colon right here so to prompt our language model to actually complete the SQL query so there we have it now the prompt is ready what we're gonna have to do is actually create the chain that uses this prompt and we're going to be using a tool for that. So let's do that. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create our Python object for our uh, SQL database. Okay, uh, we're going to be doing this using Langchain's wrapper of SQL Alchemy. And this integration, whoops, this integration comes inside of the Langchain community package. So from Langchain community, because it's a third party integration. Remember that as of the latest version of Langchain, the third party integrations are contained within Langchain community. We're going to tap into the utilities module right here. And from here, we're going to import SQL database like that. Now, first of all, in order to initialize our SQL database, we're going to need a database URI. So I'm going to initialize it like this and I'm going to create my URI. In my case, since we are using MySQL, it is MySQL. And in order to run MySQL in my local machine, I needed to install this driver called uh, MySQL connector. In order to use this, let me just show you real quick what you're going to have to install is this thing right here, MySQL connector dash Python. So let me just copy it. And let me just show you. So you do pip install MySQL connector dash Python. Now, to me, it's already installed, but to you, it might take a little bit longer. Once that's installed, you can run this like this MySQL plus MySQL connector. And inside of here, I'm just going to pass in the path to my SQL database. Okay. So in my case, my username is root, my password is admin. 
and this is of course running in my local host and I am running this in the default host port which is 3306 but in your case if you want to check in which local host this is running what you can do is go back to your MySQL instance I'm going to tap in here and now that I am inside uh, MySQL I'm going to say show variables like port let's see so there you have it so I'm running port 3306 which is the standard port for uh, MySQL it wouldn't change I mean the only reason why you might have another one is that it was changed manually on installation okay and then right here I'm going to finally tap into the name of my database remember that the database that I created is called Chinook if I'm not mistaken yep Chinook like this so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say here so there you go that is my database URI and now I can initialize my database object using the class which is the wrapper from Langchain and actually right here I have to specify that I want to do this from uh, URI there you go so now I execute this and there you go so now it is running um, to show you to show you real quick that it works let me just do db.run and let's say select everything from album let's limit that to five and there you have it we have our five albums in tuples which is very convenient so now our database is inside our Python code and we can query it and we can add it to our chain right remember that we are building this chain right here so we're building an SQL chain that is going to take the user question it's going to construct the schema of the database that we just loaded and load both into a prompt to send a language model in order to get only the SQL query okay in order to actually do this we have to first create a function that is going to return the schema of this database object that we initialized so in order to do that I'm going to just create a function called get schema and it's going to look something like what copilot is, is suggesting me but here we have to pass in an underscore which means that this is an empty parameter but since we're going to be using this as a runnable we need to pass in an argument just to um, just so that the runnable accepts this okay I'm going to show you how that works in just a little bit and we're going to return the database object and we're going to get table info like that all right just to show you how that works I'm just going to call it um, let's just call it like that so there you go here you have that this returned my actual schema for the Chinook database that we have uh, downloaded so there you have all the schema which is the names of the tables and all the names of the, all the columns okay that's pretty much all the information our language model needs to actually create the SQL query once that we have created this function right here we can focus on creating the actual SQL chain um, in order to do that we're going to have to import a few other classes right here so from Langchain core we're going to first uh, tap into the output parsers module and from here we're going to import oops we're going to import the string output parser because remember that we're, we're supposed to get a SQL query and this SQL query we're going to be running it inside of the the we're going to be running it uh, to, uh, in our database so it needs to be always a string so that's why we're going to be using a string output parser and then we're also going to need to use from also from Langchain core we're going to tap into the runnables okay and right here we're going to from right here we're going to import the runnable uh, uh, pass through this one is going to allow us to pass in this function right here as a runnable uh, so that our chain can use it okay 
And last but not least, we're going to use Langchain OpenAI models and we're going to just use chat OpenAI. Now, if you don't have, I mean, if that line is causing you trouble right here, that might be because of the latest version of Langchain. Remember that you're going to be needing to install OpenAI's package separately from Langchain. So you're going to have, if this doesn't work, you're going to have to do pip install open a sorry pip install langchain dash open ai like this remember to be inside of your virtual environment and once that is installed you should be able to use this okay so now let's create our chain first of all we're going to create our language model and we're going to initialize it from chat open ai i'm just going to initialize it like that and second of all let's just actually create our sql chain okay now the first element in our chain all right so i mean just uh, so you know we're going to be using lcell which is langchain expression language which allows us to create our own custom chains but using um, a more pipeline like syntax okay so here the first step of the pipeline is going to be our runnable pass through and this one we're going to use it to assign a value to one of the variables okay which variable is going to take this new var this new value it's going to be the variable schema right and oops schema because remember that schema is the variable that we want to replace right here in our prompt and this one right here is going to take the value that is returned by our function called get schema okay this is also one of the reasons why we need this underscore right here because even though we don't need um, um, we don't need to pass in any parameters uh, this pass through requires that whatever we pass in has one at least one parameter so that's why we get this um, underscore right there let's now focus on the following steps this step is going to assign this, this schema value to this variable then the second step we write this vertical line like this and the second step is going to be our prompt that we initialized before up here the third step is going to be to pass that to our model and right here actually what the guys of Langchain do is they tell you to add a to bind a stop sign a stop parameter to your language model this is a uh, good practice i suppose because what this allows you to do i mean let me just write it down right here um we're going to add a stop parameter here that is going to be sql result okay now what this does is basically tells your language model to stop generating more text as soon as it sees that it has already generated this right here. This is basically just a security concern or yes, a kind of observability concern so that your language model does not hallucinate a result for your query as well, right? Because remember that our prompt looks like this there is our schema question sql query and we want to make sure that if for some reason our language model gets a our language model re, the completion from our language model includes the next line which would be sql query uh, sql result we want it to stop because we don't want it to hallucinate the response okay the result um, i mean you can also you can also delete this this could this would also work but this is what they did in their example so i'm just going to keep it right there and lastly but not least we're going to add our string output parser to be sure that the result that we get from this chain is just this string containing the sql query okay now that has created our chain now how about we test it let's run the chain remember that using lang chains uh, latest version using uh, Langchain expression language we can call a chain calling the method invoke and passing in an object with all the key value pairs of all the variables in its prompts in our case 
In our case, remember that we already have populated variable schema within the pipeline. Now the only variable that we need to populate is question. So I'm going to add right here a value question and I'm going to say, oops, not like that. I'm going to say how many artists are there? I'm going to execute this and there you go. Select count as total artist from artist. There you go. So that is the SQL query that we're going to be running um, in our database uh, in the full chain. So now this SQL chain is ready. It takes the user question, it generates the schema from the database object that we defined up here and it returns a SQL query. Now let's create the full chain that is going to include this chain and run the query towards uh, run the query with another language model and return the final result. So let's do that right now. Perfect. So actually creating this new uh, chain that is going to be the full chain that contains the SQL chain is going to be very, very similar to the all the chain that we have already built right here. Okay. The only difference is that we're going to be passing in another function as runnable, which is going to be the function that is going to run our SQL query. And we're also going to be passing this SQL chain as runnable. Okay, so let's do that right now. It's actually very simple. Um, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a new template, a new prompt. And this prompt is going to look something like this. Let's first create the template just like we did before, we're going to create a template like this. I have the template already prepared right here. So let me just paste it. So it's going to say, based on the schema below, question SQL query and SQL response, write a natural language response. So we're going to pass in the schema that we have already got from running this uh, get schema runnable right here. We're going to pass in the question from the user. We're going to pass in the SQL query that was generated by our SQL chain. And we're going to pass in the SQL response, which is whatever this, um, this returns when it's run in the, in the database. Okay. So that is the template. Now, actually, now let's actually create the prompt. Um, and this prompt is going to be just as before. We're going to initialize it for, from chat prompt template. And let's say that from template as well. And we're going to initialize it from this template that we created right here. Okay. So let's run that. There you go. So now we have this prompt. And now let's actually use it to create the chain, the full chain. All right. But actually, before we create this full chain, we I forgot that we need to do something else. Remember that with our SQL chain, we had to create a function that would get the database schema and we would use that function as a runnable. In this case, we have to do the same, but this function is going to run the query. So let's create that. It's going to call run query like this. There you go. And this one is going to take in the query, which is going to be a string. And this one is basically just going to return whatever the execution of the query in the database is. However, here in our database object, the method to do this is run. And we're going to run the query like that. Okay. Let me just show you how this works. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to run this query right here, just to show you how it works. And I am going to run just a sample query just to show you I'm going to run this query right here that was generated before. There you go. There you go. So now we're going to run this query and let's see what it returns. There you go. So we have 275, which means that there are 275 artists in the entire database. So there you go. Now we have our function that works. We have our prompt that works. Now it's time to actually create the chain that is going to put everything together. Okay. So let's do that now. All right. So just as a reminder of where we are so far, let me just go back here to the article 
that you have linked in the description. And just as a reminder, we have already successfully built the SQL chain. We have already successfully got a SQL query from this chain. We have created a run query method that is going to allow us to run whatever we get from this chain. And now we have to put everything together. What we're going to have to do now is create this full chain that you have right here. And just as a reminder, you have all of the codes um, that I wrote here in the video right here in the article with all of the explanations and everything and all of the prompts and everything is inside of here as well. So just be sure to, to open this. And yeah, so now what we're going to do is create a chain. So the first thing that I'm going to do is initialize it as full chain. I'm going to be using LCell as well, which is Langchain's expression language. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the SQL chain as a runnable. Okay. Now, in order to do this, just like we did before, we're going to assign um, a value to one of the variables that we have in our prompt. In our case, because we're going to be passing in the SQL chain, we're going to be uh, populating this, oh, no, which variable is it? Yeah, this variable right here, which is the query, All right? So that's the first thing. The query is going to equal whatever our SQL chain is able to return, okay? And here, let's actually just pipeline this a little bit more. And whatever this returns, we're going to pass in to another as another runnable and this one is going to populate our schema which is going to get it from the get schema function that we just created and the second variable that we want to, to populate is the one response okay now here we cannot actually just do like this because we need to know which which um, parameter we're going to pass as argument right so if we just pass run query, it's not going to know what to put inside this parameter right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap into the, the, the variables returned by this runnable, and we're going to choose the query that has been returned by the runnable already, right? Remember that the runnable is the SQL chain. I hope this is clear. Um, just buckle up, it's going to be very simple. Actually, I'm going to let me just print it so that you see what's actually going on. Uh, we're going to create a Lambda function that is going to, uh, I'm just going to call this variables. And right here, let me just print this. Let's just print all the variables. All right. And let me just close, close everything. Okay. Of course, this is not the full chain, but I just want to show you what is going to actually be going on. So we create this chain and let's just execute it. Let's invoke it saying that the question is going to be how many artists are there. Okay, let's execute this. So there you go. You have that the print variables are first are the questions and everything. And once that is executed, we have the question, we have the query that has been already been returned by our SQL chain. We have our schema, which was returned by our get schema. And the response, of course, since the print method returns none, is none. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to run whatever is inside the query with our run query uh, function. Okay. So let's do that. We're going to have to use this lambda function right here. And we're going to do um, run query variables query like that. Uh, hopefully this is going to work. Let's see how that looks. Second, like, I mean, that was the, the hard part right here. After that, we're just going to pass that into our prompt. And lastly, we're going to pass in our model that we have previously designed, previously created. Um, here, well, <laughs> Copilot has recommended me to bind another stop sign for the natural language response. I mean, you can add it. I don't think we need it. Um, so let's just run this and let's run the second one and see what it returns. 
There you go. So it returns an AI message saying that there are a total of 275 artists in the database, which is exactly the result that we got from our query right here. So our full chain is working and it seems to be going correctly. Now, I'm just going to modify this right here. It's going to say vars or I don't know, variables just seems too long. But yeah, I mean, there you have it. That's the full chain. Just remember that we are passing first the SQL chain as runnable and then whatever that returns is we're going to be using it to populate the we're going the second runnable which is going to include the, the schema and also the the response from the query okay so there you go that's I mean if you want you can even add uh, last string output parser which is going to return only the string of the message that I mean that's optional so there you go that's how to create a SQL chain in the next video I'm going to show you how to implement this in a graphical user interface but I figured that it was very important that you see how this works in an actual notebook um, because I mean in order to actually implement this in a in a graphical user interface, you have to kind of be aware of what's going on behind the scenes with this diagram. So I hope that it, that was clear. I hope that I hope that you have learned a lot from this video, and it has been a pleasure having you here again. Remember to subscribe. Remember to sign up to the Discord to the um, Discord community to see all the news about the community and to participate a little bit more in the future of the channel. And thank you very much for being here and I will see you next time.